So recently on social media, several people have been complaining about the lack of response to the emergency service hotline 119. We have invited Deputy Superintendent Vanessa Clark and call center manager Tanya Ricketts to talk us through all of this. Good morning to you both. Welcome. Good morning. Um, Good morning Deputy Sue, let me start with you because having said what I just said, I since read that not no go so. So what is it? Are we calling and we're not getting what we should be getting and quick responses and stuff or are we making something out of nothing here? Um, well, I wouldn't say that persons are making something out of nothing, but I would say that some of the allegations are exaggerated. Um, you have to remember, Neville, that whenever someone has a concern, they think that their emergency is the only emergency. Um, what we do at Police Emergency is interview the callers to determine whether or not this requires immediate police, this incident requires immediate police response. Let me jump in quickly um, because we don't have a whole lot of time. So I call, um, I get the, the person answers, I say, I see somebody robbing a car outside. Yes. What, what, what am I asked after that, Tanya? The first thing you are asked is the location. Right, Because tell you. And you get the location, we send it immediately. We input the information in our computer system and it's sent to the dispatcher. Uh, providing what the incident, you said it's a car break-in. We may need a, dis a description of the individual that is doing the action. And that's all we basically need. If it's a contact number, sometimes we may ask, but you're not forced to give it at all. Yeah, Superintendent, I don't want to, uh, see, Deputy Super, I don't want to hug it, but I just want to finish this line. Yes. So if somebody else calls at that same time and say, I just see a shooting, you would say the shooting is prioritized and my, car, my, my break in the car is not. Now remember that we have several call takers, several agents on the lines. So the call for the, call, the car breaking could come to one line, dealt with by a, a particular um, agent, and the call for the other incident would come to another line. Um, we have a call queuing system though, and this sometimes creates a, a backup of calls because it's, calls are forced to the call taker. So the call taker does not have the option of prioritizing a call. So if you call with, say, some people call us for directory assistance. Um, some, yes, Whoa. things like that. Um, people call us to discuss trending topical issues. What is happening with the minister down the road? What is happening with the roadworks in St. Thomas? That sort of thing. Um, persons call with prank calls. But because the calls are queued, you calling with your non-emergency or your prank might be ahead of the person who has a real emergency. And then we have to wait until the agent is, um, gets, disposes of your call before the real emergency is dealt with. So One of the big questions must be about quality assurance. Yes. Because that, I think that's where the, the complaints are grounded. Mm -hmm. how, how are calls monitored? How often, you know, describe that process? Well, we have a quality assurance unit that is headed by our call center manager, Ms. Ricketts, and she has a team of quality assurance supervisors. Mm -hmm. So she'll just explain to you how the quality assurance process okay. works. Well, our calls are monitored daily. And as we said, calls are, all calls are recorded. All calls? Okay. All calls are recorded, right. Mm -hmm. But we get anywhere between 6,000 to 9,000 calls a day. Every so day? Every day. So it's quite difficult, you know, to monitor all 9,000. Mm -hmm. But we do have a team, as Ms. Clark said, and we do, we do post-monitoring, that is when we go back to work, we list the calls that came before, and we do live monitoring as well. We also um, shadow the agents. Yes. So from time to time, you will walk into the room and you'll see myself, or you'll see Ms. Ricketts, or one of her team members on the floor, actually listening to the call taker's response, and then you're able sometimes to coach a little there and ensure that this, this level of service that we deliver is constantly monitored and is always of the highest quality. Yeah. This week, like you mentioned, prank calls sometimes. Yes. How often you get prank calls? Is that, is that a day. regular feature? Every like, day, 24 yes. hours yes. per day. And there's no way to follow up to well, punish these persons or block them. I don't know. I'm just, what's, what's the process? Unfortunately, no, there is no, because we still have to take it. We can't operate as in the boy who cried wolf scenario. We can't mm. do that at all. 
because somebody who may have been pranking all day may just very well have an emergency. So we take every single call. Yeah. Deputy Super, what I want to go back to what you said, that the calls are queued. Yes. Uh, so I call you and I say, I don't like how the minister behave. You mm -hmm. don't just say, sir, I can't take that call now and hang up the phone now because the next person might be calling about a murder. Don't you, you go and spend you time? You do that. You do that. You, you get disposed of the call as quickly as possible. But you have to remember also that some persons preface the prank with um, something that sounds like a genuine concern. Give me an so, idea. Um, someone will call and say, um, let us use the car braking in, um, yeah. incident. Um, they're breaking into a car at 7A Morton Park Avenue, and you're asking clarification questions because you have to interview the caller so that you can um, dispatch the appropriate response. And by the time you're halfway through the questioning, um, you, are, you hear an expletive. Or, some, or the person just um, laughs out or something like that. So you know that, no, this is a prank call. Mm -hmm. Because they, they are, sometimes they just disconnect the calls. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that um, this is no one prank question. call. You can't trace that call? Um, the truth is that the discussions are being had with the, the I command and the, the Minister of National the Ministry of National Security discussions are being held and I know that um, this is a serious of serious concern to both the ministry and the police and um, legislation needs to be put in place and I know that they are working on that. It's working progress. On the following up on the matter of the, you know those the call monitoring and, and yes. so on evaluation of the process, if persons are displeased with the service, what's the route to, to, to report and to, to, to get any kind of recourse? Well, there are several avenues, several avenues. You can call, call us on our straight lines at 927-7778. You can call our CUG 220-0837. You can send an email to our quality assurance unit. That's that email address? Police emergency QUA at jcf.gov.jm. Mm -hmm. You can also call IPRO, Professional Standards Branch. And um, the, 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 the complaint is always dealt with. We, we investigate, we pull our tapes, we, call, we do a callback, and we, we have a communication process, that two-way communication process with the, the complainant. Um, you, you already said 9,000, 69,000. How yes. many of those would be real, genuinely? Genuine <laughs> no, vast majority. If we were to put statistics to it, we would... Vast majority are genuine. Oh, genuine? Yeah. No, non-genuine, vast majority. About 20, probably to 30% are genuine calls. What? Yes. yes. So, 30 out of every 100 people call, the other 70 is foolish system call. No, not no, necessarily not foolishness. Necessarily foolishness because um, we, would, we have prank and we have uh, no answer calls, so they're not necessarily prank calls, mm -hmm. probably there are some connection issue. And there are, there are also other non-emergencies yeah. that we will classify in that 70%. Yeah. Um, Deputy Soup, final question from me. So I call you and I say, I see a shooting. Um, how much question you ask me before you send somebody to that shooting? Um, we have um, an interactive process with the person who dispatches. So you say, so where, is the, where is it? Yeah, um, the location, you, it's typed into the system yeah. and the dispatcher sees that immediately so they know that they are to send somebody. So all the other questions, the follow-up questions will be updated on the system. So we don't have to wait until we get all the information. And so give me an idea then of your uh, response time. So if I call you 8 o'clock, about what time you reach? Well, you have to remember that police emergency does not respond to the actual incident. What we do is identify the appropriate response team. So the response timing, actual response timing, physical response timing is down to the, the operatives in the field. Give me an idea. We, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 uh, minutes. We get hour. the calls out under five minutes from okay. PECC okay. and you should see them in the, the response team in the urban areas within another 10 minutes. All right, we have to go. Great to yeah. see you both. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. All right, stop the prank business because some people could be in serious, serious. In serious <laughs> trouble and you call about a joke and that person would to be in trouble. Deputy Superintendent uh, Vanessa Clark and call center manager uh, Tanya Ricketts. Thank you both for coming. Thank God you for having us. Be safe. Thank and, you. You too. And say hi to your colleagues for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, will do. All right, what are going on? Whew, boy, after the break, we meet a mother and son duo in Alaska who are creating a stir with their Jamaican ginger lemonade.